Hey, soul survivors, we're going to talk about when traditional therapy doesn't work. Now, I am a certified life coach, but why does traditional therapy not work? So this is in response to a viewer comment that they're going to save my link because traditional therapy is not working. So one of the biggest things to do is make sure you have a trauma-informed therapist because if they do not know about narcissistic abuse, they're going to give advice that is not going to work because it's a different type of trauma. Just like if I broke my leg, uh, giving me a reconstructive heart surgery is not going to heal my broken leg. So when you deal with narcissistic abuse, it causes a trauma bond. We have to break that trauma bond. It also lowers your self-esteem. So we have to lift our self-esteem. We also have to uh, not be afraid of the future and let go of the past. So we also have to take into account uh, certain religions may encourage you to stay. And sometimes there are times that you can work through. Not every marriage is going to be perfect, but if it's to the point that is damaging your mental health, if the other party is not willing to change or compromise, narcissists don't like to compromise. There are several that can't compromise. It's too uncomfortable or too much of a hassle for them. So her story was she was with this uh, guy for 12 years and then he just up and ghosted um, her and her adult child. So it can be extremely painful. And we also ruminate our thoughts uh, are almost obsessive. Some of us dissociate to where we feel like it's an outer body experience. We go through depression, anxiety, confusion, brain fog. So since we have that brain fog, we can't see things clearly like we should. Uh, sometimes we only listen to certain parts. Part of that's that brain fog. Some of it's uh, cognitive dissonance where we're picking uh, the lesser of two evils uh, because we don't want to go through any more heartache because we've already been so devastated. So it's important to live in the future or I'm sorry, it's important to live in the present. A lot of us are living in the past and we are bringing the past into our present. We might be ruminating while we're trying to play with our kids. So we're not focusing on our kids. We're not getting that connection because we're often la la land thinking about, you know, how do I fix this or do I let them go? Or why did they do this? That our thoughts are not in the present. So we're disconnecting with the people we should. Just like if you came over for some coffee and your mind is wandering somewhere else, we are not having our connection. So it starts feeling very lonely. And when you feel very lonely, sometimes you can get depressed. Sometimes we self-isolate. Uh, we're used to the narcissist. Uh, taking away our relationships, whether they complain uh, about us taking time away from them uh, or just isolating. They don't want to do things with us. So we feel obligated to stay home. But when you live in the present, it deepens connections. It helps with those connections. So you, you don't feel so anxious or so depressed and you are taking things in and experiencing life when you start experiencing life you're going to start to feel alive because some of us feel so dead inside and it's easier to go down this path of uh, depression and when we go through that maybe we're not eating the right amount uh, whether it's too much or not enough a lot of times it's empty calories that we eat and our health starts suffering. Also, the stress that we went through can cause physiological problems within us. So it's unhealthy mentally, physically, and emotionally that it's that toxic. So if the person's not willing to change or work through things or compromise or even talk to you, because a lot of times narcissists will give you the silent treatment, word salad, and a bunch of lies. So when we're trying to figure out when we're going through our rumination, what went wrong? Did I do this? We, we start feeling guilty or I should have tried harder. We have to realize, you know, 
nobody's perfect. We did the best we could. We, we tried as much as we could and the relationship gets toxic and we're, we're both doing toxic things sometimes without even realizing it. And then we start becoming needy because, um, it's, it's like a push pull dynamic and, and we're, we're fed up. If you guys comment below when you were at wit's end, is that when you got love bombed? They didn't love bomb you out of the blue. They love bombed you when you started pulling away. That's when they start taking uh, initiative, but they give breadcrumbs and it, you feel them drifting away because they are taking advantage of the situation. Now, some nar narcissists do try to have a relationship with you. Others are just straight up out for whatever you can provide them, whether it's popularity, fin financial uh, security, or sex, whatever it is that some straight up use people. And when we get ghosted or put through that silent treatment, that we have to realize that we don't deserve that we can't prevent it, but we don't have to put up with it either. So by understanding the conscious level versus the subconscious level, once we start getting into the subconscious and creating a belief with faith in our own future, that this is what I want. This We have to believe that we are worthy of uh, you know, a good relationship or a good job or whatever is important to you and focusing on that as opposed to focusing on the stress of, am I going to get this? Or why is it taking so long? Uh, or it's never going to happen. The negative self-talk we can go through. So make sure if you are going to a therapist, you are going to somebody who understands because that trauma bond uh, also, you know, uh, the perspective on it, sometimes you can say, well, yeah, they gave you flowers and you're like, it's a cycle. Do you not understand the cycle? And they're like, yeah, they're just coming back around trying to, um, uh, you know, work things out. They're trying, they're not trying. They're going to give you flowers and forget about it. Once they get what they want, then they go back to taking you for granted, the breadcrumbing, possibly cheating. And it's just a cycle that continues. So can narcissists change? Some can try, but we have to understand that it's ingrained in them. And unless they stop lying, unless they start taking accountability, unless they shift their focus to where it's not all about them, it will continue. And the longer it continues, the longer you're exposing yourself to possible disease from the physiological effects of that stress, it's really hard on your heart, can cause diabetes, weight gain, or even weight loss, that hair loss, things like that. There is a shift that is vital and I can't stress this enough that you're going to start to feel alive when you start living in today so whatever happened whatever you're ruminating about whatever you're thinking about did you think about how good dinner tasted did you think about the beautiful breeze on your face when you were walking were you thankful you had a job uh or were you focusing on stressors um you know, it is good to look forward to the future, but avoid negative self-talk or allowing the narcissist to win how they cut down your self-esteem. We have to recognize what reality is. Are we, you know, some hideous person? We're not. We know our value and value isn't always on the outside. Value goes but beneath the skin. So it's not, you know, do you have the best hair? Do you have the best face or body? Know who you are. Know what your soul is. And know what that soul deserves. But live in the moment. And realize what you're feeling. If you're feeling lonely, sometimes we um, want to get back. She 
might not want to get back, but some of us long to get back. Or we had the poor, poor me thing that, you know, we kind of go through, you know, that now we're divorced or broken up and everybody else has somebody, but I don't have someone. So there's that loneliness factor that start building friendships. It doesn't have to be a romantic interest. Um, we also have to understand ourselves. Uh, let's say, you know, your therapist says maybe you should go to church or synagogue or mosque that some of them are big and overwhelming. Uh, some of them have upbeat music. Some of them have music you're not going to enjoy uh, that might bring you down. Um, that maybe you should go to a, like a Bible study or a Torah study, uh, Quran study that, you know, sometimes you have that fellowship in a smaller group. Do what you need to do for you. And your healing needs to be um, adjusted to what your needs are. So if you go with a narcissist, they always say, don't go to therapy with the narcissist because it's usually going to turn out bad. The narcissist is either, either going to turn on you or they're going to justify all their wrongs and they manipulate the therapist because they can be quite charming. Sometimes when you go to therapy, they can uh, use the information to learn how to manipulate better. So sometimes it can turn out even worse. And she went through a 12 year marriage just to be ghosted. And it's different than a regular breakup. A lot of times, you know, it's not working or, you know, I want to join a rock band and I hate this that, you know, but I have to follow my dreams and I'm going to be traveling and you don't want to because of your dreams. Sometimes it's sad, but sometimes people drift apart or they're missing something that they need to feel whole. A lifelong dream. And sometimes the two people Sometimes it works out. You can both follow those dreams, but when one dream is way off and you have to make a decision, some people are okay giving up that dream. Some people aren't. And either way, to ghost somebody that you've had 12 years with, no explanation, no, I'm sorry. No, you were great, but this is something I need. And but to just be ghosted, like you aren't worth the time of day. Realize that it just shows who they are, not who you are. It's a reflection of themselves. And make sure it's a trauma-informed therapist. Or I can uh, schedule appointments with you, Cynthia at a soul survivor.com. Send me an email if you'd like to schedule an appointment. But most importantly, we have to break that rumination. It takes time. You need to go through it. It's part of the stages of grief. But there's a five stages of grief. I have videos on that. Don't rush it. But also don't get stuck to where you're not progressing in your he healing process. I hope that was helpful. Live in today. Uh, share some things that you noticed today. Sometimes I didn't realize how soft my dog's fur was, or uh, I took a little time and curled my hair today, or it felt good to make my bed. Treat yourself how you would treat others. A lot of times, you know, we have company coming over and that's when we clean our house. Clean your house for yourself. Make your bed for yourself. And, you know, take some time. Uh, if there's nobody to do certain things with, don't miss out on the opportunity. Still go for a walk or, uh, you know, there's parks and uh, the outdoor air, the vitamin D from the sun can have therapeutic effects, but it does get better and it will be such a relief and enlightening. And it almost snowballs after that to where the healing has begun and it will speed up. You have to have faith and you have to believe you're worth it. Trust the process. We don't always have to know where we're going. Just take that step forward and it'll get you on an adventure. You might not know where you're going, but you're going forward. <laughs>